hereafter. Did you know that? No, no, hardly anybody knows. One third of the Quran speaks about heaven, hell and hereafter. One third. How many of us know? Look, we haven't read it ourselves. We haven't. I haven't. Hold on. See, I'm only reading what I need. We say, what I need. You create a need, a problem for me. I'm looking for a solution. Then I come and give it to you. I don't know the whole Quran. I don't know who knows the whole Quran. You go and ask a brother, say, look, what does the Quran say? Now the Christian is asking you that. He's got a Bible under his arm. He's prepared now. He's read your book. He's asking you, he's asking you, what does the Quran say? Where will the, the heaven be established? He said, what does the Quran say? So you can't say, go and see my Sheikh, Sheikh Zahran. Will you say that? No, it's not befitting. Go and see Mr. Didat. Will you say that? Not befitting. You want to give battle. Huh? You want to give everybody. I'm talking, when I say you, I'm talking about all of us. You want to give battle. You have, you have no knowledge. So now I have to teach you. I said, no, my son. That guy is a black belt karate expert. He's trained to come along and ask you these questions. Now, if you play the game according to his rules, you'll come out second best. Now, what you have to do, you have to turn the tables. So I tell you, I says, my son, you see what you do? Tell him, confess, man, confess. Then look, my brother, friend, I know very little about the Quran. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm a Muslim, born Muslim. But there's hardly anything I know about the Quran. Admit it, all of us. But you know your Bible. Say yes. You know your Bible. Say yes. He was like, no. Then said, foot sack, get away, man, you bloody rubbish. You don't know your own Bible, you're going to talk about the Quran? Get away! <laughs> he's got to say yes, because he's got Bible under his arm. He's come along to push it down your throat. He said, you know something about your Bible? Say yes. He said, can I have a look at it? Is that a Bible? He said, yes. He gives it to you. And I show you the primer, how to prime this. You have primed it. You just open up. I'll show you what to do. How to mark it, highlight it. You have done that. Not his Bible, in your Bible you have done it. You know where what is there. So right. Open up Genesis chapter 19. Open Genesis chapter 19, verse 30. Read! That's how you do the job. Open Genesis chapter 30, 35, verse 22. Read! Your book, you explain to me. You explain. That guy will never darken your door. <laughs> you see, so, number one. We have to use this rubbish, you know, to fight him. You can't fight the devil with holy water. Um, brother, I'd just like to know why the disbelievers, they don't, they hate Muslims. I'm talking about either Jewish or Christians. They hate Muslims. We're not, it's classical and ordinary question. Um, worse than that, they know about Dawah, they know about everything, but they just, they don't want to know nothing. They don't want to hear nothing from they us. us. They don't want to listen nothing. We talk to them, we explain to them. We're not asking them for their money or their fortune or nothing at all. Just asking to show them, but they just close their ears and... No, you see, we are coming at cross purposes, let's say with the Christians. He says sin is inherited. We say no, sin is not inherited. Sin is acquired. From the word, from the word go, we are now a tug of war. He said, sin is inherited, everybody is a sinner, everybody goes to hell, unless you believe that Christ died for your sins. So number one, we say no, sin is not inherited. Right? Number two, he said, Jesus is God. We say no, he is not God. He said, Christ was crucified. He says no, wama kataluhu, wama salabuhu. He is going to make you. He says, God is the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. You say, wala takulu thalasa. Don't say Trinity. Intahu khairalakum. This is, stop it, it'll be better. You think anybody likes that? Anybody likes that? No. So you have to learn, huh? Look, that is a fact. Whatever he's telling is wrong, wrong, wrong. But now we have to find ways and means of getting at that fellow. And the best way is, ask him, where did you get this? He says, it's in my book. So, so let's have a look. What does he say? If you can humble yourself, let us see. Come on, let's have a look, man. Jesus is God? He said, yes. <clears throat> Did he say he's God? He said, yes. So we hey, Show me. In my lectures, in my debates, I'm telling the Christian, you show me anywhere in your Bible 
Anywhere, in any version of the Bible where Jesus says, I'm God, I said, I'm prepared to accept him as God. If where Jesus says, worship me, I'm prepared to worship him. I said, I don't speak for these people. For you, I can't speak for you. I speak for myself. Show me. Finish. The guy is stunned. No argument. I said, you show me and I'll accept. You say, it's not there. I said, you're asking me. Your book. You show me. Where Jesus says, I'm God, I'm prepared to accept him. Where he says, worship me, I'm prepared to worship him. So in other words, now because I know his book, I can, I can offer him that. And now he's stumped in front of 2,000 people. The guy is stumped. Say, so Christ died for my sins. He says, where, how? <laughs> Talk to him. Allah says, kul ha, do burhan. Ask him for his burhan. Once he, Allah is telling you that he hasn't got a leg to stand upon. That's as if the judge is telling you, go to town with the fellow man, smash him up. Man, I know he's a liar, he's a liar, he's a liar. Go and make a mess of him. The judge is telling you. And you're not doing it. The judge is telling you, this guy is a liar, he's a liar, he's a fake, he's a fake. And you're doing nothing. You must go to town and come, come man, let us talk, let us reason together. That is the strength. See, you are speaking from strength, now come, come. I'm prepared to listen to you. What have you got? So that's what I'm showing you. Use his book. Allah says, Qul hatu burhanakum. Ask him for his burhan. He produced it, 11 different Arabic dialects. For you, Arabs, 11 different Arabic dialects. What excuse you got now? Huh? In 2,000 different languages. I just come from Sudan. I went to the Sudan. They have done 40 different Southern Sudanese language. Bible. They are at war with the Dinkas in the south. The Dinka, they got four different Dinka dialects. Bible in four different Dinka dialects. But now you haven't learned the art. That guy comes from 10,000 miles. He learns the language of the native and converts him and strengthens him. He uses the Bible as a textbook for teaching him literature. He's doing the job brainwashing the guy. And you're going to know this is no good. It doesn't work. He's given it to you in your language. So we have to learn from the enemy to do the job. I don't know. I'm learning, from, I'm trying to learn from the enemy. Myself to invent the wheel is not for me. I haven't got that energy or the time to invent the wheel, a new wheel. You know wheel? It's invented man. Right. Whoever has invented, take it and improve on that wheel. Don't start wanting to say, no, I'm going to make my own wheel. So I'm learning from the enemy. This is what he is doing. I said, right, if I do the same thing with my book, the Quran is there. There is a type of man, you talk about the Quran. There is a type of man, perverted transgressor, as soon as you open your mouth about the Quran, say, where did it come from? I said, no, it was revealed to the Holy Prophet Muhammad. Muhammad? How many wives did he have? He's <laughs> making a mockery. He spread his religion at the point of the sword, he forced people, he slammed down people's throat. Fight, fight! No, don't do that. I said, learn this judo. You know, use the, the, the force of your enemy and you see you go far better longer with less strength you don't need that amount of strength if you use the strength of your enemy this is fine next one myself um you said this book stand in the corner and smile would solve a lot of problems do you think muslims who are being persecuted and executed in algeria muslims in burma muslims in kashmir in palestine need this book for the solution you no. see, that is the no. true solution. No. And also with that, to extend from no, that no, question, but inshallah, I, I had all your problems. Algeria, you have a problem. Kashmir, you have a problem. In India, we have a problem. In, in Palestine, we have a problem. Now, with this one pellet, with one this little pebble, you want to solve all the problems? No, I never claimed it. I said, this Jalut who's knocking at your door, this is how you can shut him up. This is how you can educate him. Because that guy is not going to wait till you solve all your problems. He's stealing your children in the meantime. In Algeria, he's stealing your children. In Kashmir, he's stealing your children. In Bangladesh, in Pakistan, in Indonesia, in Malaysia. All over the world here, man, it's a godsend opportunity for them to steal your children. Here, the aren't they coming and knocking at your door? So, now, to me, I'm only telling you how to deal with this Jalud. 
the American, the British, the French, whoever it is who is trying to steal your children, I said, now this is how, how to fight him. You tell me how you're going to solve the problem in Algeria? I said, brother, there are better people than me there, Algeria. About Palestine, I said, there are better people than me to solve the problem of Palestine. I am not here as a God to tell you solve all your problems. I am only telling you, this guy here is trying to steal your children. This is how you can defend yourself. A one day survival course. I want to give you survival course against this enemy. And when you have time, I'll also tell the Algerians I'm supposed to go there and tell them something. And tomorrow go tell them something. If for everybody, I have something. But now, at the right place. Here I'm going to tell you what you're going to do in Algeria. What, what am I, I'm wasting your time. And in Pakistan, in Kashmir, what you must do? 